Hong Kong Philharmonic Orchestra, Wagner's Ring Cycle, Part 4, Goethe Dämmerung. All right, well, welcome to our introduction to Act 3 of Goethe Dämmerung. I'm here with Michael McLeod, the Chief Executive of the Hong Kong Philharmonic. I'm Sue Elliott. Michael. Um, you know, we have full two acts behind us now, and one of the questions I'm always curious about is how you think the experience of performing this complete ring cycle has impacted the orchestra itself. I think it's had a fundamental impact on the orchestra. I think they listen in a way that they never have before because this is paramount and critical when you are accompanying singers for such a long time. You really have to concentrate on the level of your playing, the nuance, following the conductor, listening to the singer, making music. It's a tremendous combination of factors. And I think it's no accident that one of the orchestras that is commonly regarded as one of the truly great ones of the world is the Vienna Philharmonic. And the fact is that most of their work is operatic. Mm. And the first, arguably the first truly great recording of the Ring Cycle was Schulte's with the Vienna Philharmonic. And then you get to that other great orchestra of the world, the Berlin Philharmonic. And yes, they don't live in an opera pit the way the Vienna Philharmonic basically does, but they have done a great deal of opera, largely inspired by their music director for up close to 40 years, Herbert von Karajan. And it was he who recorded the entire ring cycle with the Berlin Philharmonic and actually filmed some of it as well. He did his own filming of, of Das Heingold. So I think the great orchestras of the world play a lot of opera and not just opera, they play Wagner. Mm -hmm. And I think that playing Wagner and we've done, you know, we've done Lohengrin and we've done the Flying Dutchman fully staged in Hong Kong. But with Jaap van Sweden, our music director, and by the way, the next music director of the New York Philharmonic, so Hong Kong's never had it this good. But with Jaap van Sweden, we've done these, the first ever performances of the Ring Cycle in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So it has never been performed here by any orchestra mm -hmm. ever before. Amazing. And these performances have, I believe, raised the quality of the orchestra enormously. And this is largely to Yap's credit by bringing the very, very best out of the players. And on top of doing concert performances of Das Rheingold, Die Walküre and Siegfried already here in Hong Kong, we had, a, we had a wonderful invitation just two months ago extended to us because it was the 20th anniversary of the handover of Hong Kong, the 20th anniversary of the Beijing Music Festival, and the 50th anniversary of the Salzburg Easter Festival, mm -hmm. founded by Herbert von Karajan. And in his very first year, he not only conducted Die Walküre, he also did his own staging. Mm -hmm. And we were invited by Yu Long, our principal guest conductor and the artistic director of the Beijing Music Festival, to perform Karajan's staging of Die Walküre in Beijing. Wow. Conducted by Yap with the Hong Kong Phil in the pit. And this, experience and in fact this relates to my next point because there's a kind of a light piece that we did on the side we also played Bruckner 8 at the <laughs> Beijing Music Festival and it is in fact the fact that we've done these Wagner operas helps us play Bruckner and Mahler and Richard Strauss in I think uh, a much much better way so it's it's all win-win throughout and it's been an extraordinary ride mm -hmm. not just of the Valkyries but of many other things as well. Sure, one of the things that I've loved as we've gone through the performances of each of the operas in the ring cycle here in Hong Kong is the opportunity to actually watch the orchestra playing these scores. Because oftentimes when I'm in an opera house, you, you don't see the orchestra. No. They're not a part of the visual picture. And I love the, um, the communication of all of that human energy on stage. I know that everybody has to work a little bit harder when you're performing a big Wagner opera with singers on stage yeah. in front of the orchestra because the sound balance is a little yeah. different than it would mm -hmm. be in an opera theater. But I think that's been a real treat here for audiences and it will continue to be so as it has all night long to actually see that wonderful chemical reaction or alchemical 
reaction of everybody working together on stage. And of course, all of our Wagner operas in the Ring Cycle have been captured by Naxos, which is actually a record company that started in Hong Kong, but mm -hmm. of course is truly international. And with the recording, people can enjoy a, a truly fantastic balance between the orchestra and the cast. I think we get it ver very well in the cultural center in the performances, but on the recording, obviously, they've had a chance to tweak things here and there. So I do encourage people to buy the Naxos recordings. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Well, at this point in the performance, I have to say I always find it difficult to believe that there are only three scenes and 80 minutes of music left before the end of the world. And in performances like this one tonight, I'm often wishing we could start the whole cycle over again tomorrow. It's such a gripping experience. So, so Michael, what are you and the orchestra doing tomorrow? Could we start over with Das Rheingold? Well, it's funny you should mention that because a new hall is going to open in Hong Kong. Wow. And in fact, Yap and I have already discussed this of maybe emulating the schedule of the original performance of the Ring Cycle wow. in 1876 in Bayreuth. Where in fa and I, I think most people listening will know that it was originally meant to be performed in four days. Mm -hmm. But at the opening in 1786, I, I guess it was probably the singers who kicked up and said, we need a free day, buddy. And so they, they did Rheingold, followed immediately by Die Valkyra, then they had a day off, and then they did Siegfried, and then Goethe Demerung. So, I mean, it's a far-fetched scheme, which may or may never happen, but Yap and I love the idea of trying to recreate this in Hong Kong, maybe when the new hall opens, whereby, say, and this would allow tourists from all over the world to come to Hong Kong for a week and hear the entire ring cycle with the Hong Kong Philharmonic Orchestra and Yap. So the way we might do this is do Das Rheingold on the Tuesday. This would allow people to fly in from around the world beforehand. So Das Rheingold on the Tuesday, Die Valkyrie on the Wednesday. Then we give the audience and orchestra a day off on Thursday. Siegfried on Friday, Goethe Demerung on Saturday, and that allows the audience to fly back to wherever they came from on the Sunday. And that would be, as I said, a recreation of what happened in Bayreuth. So it's not out of the question. It's a huge logistical and financial challenge, but I'm not saying no. So if we're talking about Wagner's sort of original conceit and the way he did things, um, I guess because it's a new hall, you wouldn't go with his original, original, original plan, which was to burn down the theater at the end of Gutter Damerung. I would like that, but the government might not. Fair enough. I mean, all press is good press, though, right? Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Act 3 of Gutter Damerung begins with a return to the characters who started the cycle. As the music begins, we're back at the shore of the River Rhine, with the Rhine daughter swimming around. They reminisce about the time before the Rheingold was stolen by Alberich and call for a hero to return it to them. We see the same sort of interaction between Siegfried and the Rhine daughters that we saw in the opening scene of Das Rheingold. They cavort, tease, and try to persuade him to give up the ring to no avail, and they swim away. Hagen and the vassals join Siegfried on stage for the second scene of Act Three. Siegfried is encouraged by Hagen to tell his life story and like anyone who might be hungry for attention, Siegfried agrees and does just that. Then, as two ravens fly over the scene, Hagen takes the next step in his plan to acquire the ring by killing Siegfried, much to the shock of Gunther and the vassals. One of the most moving moments in the entire ring cycle is Siegfried's funeral procession. It's a chance for you to sit back, maybe close your eyes, and just feel the tragedy of the sudden turn in our story. Opera is known for very powerful death scenes, but not so much for after death scenes. This is one of the all time greats. Michael, do you wanna talk a little bit, that's an orchestra only moment. Um, and it's even so powerful that it's often excerpted and performed by itself on, on orchestral concerts. I'd love to hear a little bit more about the orchestra. Well, you talk about taking bits from operas. Uh, the, the most famous is The Ride of the Valkyries mm -hmm. from Die Valkyrie. And Tristan, one often does the closing scene of Tristan und Isolde without singers. Um, and 
the reason why people do this is because the music is so great. Mm -hmm. And contrary to some of the non-ring cycle operas, the um, I mean, the ring cycle operas don't have overtures. Right. So you're missing these fantastic overtures. I mean, my my all-time favorite overture might be Die Meisterzinger mm. von Nuremberg, mm -hmm. which is just so powerful and uplifting. I, I just love it. I might arm wrestle you for Lohengrin. Yeah. And yeah. there are other part there are other orchestral snippets from snippets I call them from Lohengrin, which are so moving. Yes. Um, and then you've got Tannhäuser. Mm -hmm. So Flying Dutchman, you know, there's a whole range. But I mean, it's actually a pity that Wagner didn't write more symphonies. Mm -hmm. He wrote one or two. If people talk about only one proper symphony, mm -hmm. there is a second one, but neither is as compelling as his overtures and the orchestral extracts from his operas. Mm -hmm. I guess it just took the singers to inspire him to his greatest work. Maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, following the funeral procession, which is a shattering moment, we transition into the third and final scene of Act Three. The aftermath of Siegfried's death, I promise, will leave no character unaffected and hopefully no one in the audience unaffected either. There's not much that I need to say about this final scene other than it is worth it. You've given a lot of time and effort to this opera so far. I know it can feel like it's slow to unfold, but the concluding scene of Wagner's epic ring cycle is one of the most powerful and moving scenes on any stage, anywhere. Brunhilde's peroration stands unequaled in the Western European classical music tradition. But the last word of the cycle? Wagner gives it to the orchestra. And what a conclusion it is. Happy are we to have the incredible musicians of the Hong Kong Philharmonic close this incredible artistic and musical undertaking. Ladies and gentlemen, we give you the final act of Wagner's Ring Cycle, Act Three of Gutterdämmerung. <laughs> 